champ must be crazy. He's got a fight tomorrow night. Yeah, I know. I'll get it. Charlie, you cut yourself. What do you want, Charlie? Ben died. When? Today. I had to come down anyway for the fight tomorrow. I couldn't sleep, Ma. I thought maybe I... Peg is sleeping here, Charlie. Oh. I couldn't stand it up there, Ma. After they took Ben away. I couldn't sleep, so I came down. I had to find a place where I could lie down. Well, you know, Ma. You have to find a place... I didn't mean all those things I said to Peg. You know that. Me here. The butcher was closed. But I got everything else from the grocer. Peg! Charlie. Beat everybody. What a fight. You leaving, Jan? Till today. Oh, hello, Jan. Uh, she'll be through in a few minutes. Can I check your coat? Hello, Jan. Perfect. But 
Hello, sweetie. Quinn's been going nuts. You've been every place in town but here. Why didn't you come here first, Charlie? How does it look, Charlie, the night before the fight? 3 a.m. and you load it. Come on, Alice, let's go. Okay, champ. Just on the nose, Davis. All fat. Nightclub fat. Whiskey fat. 35-year-old fat. Black rocks. Too bad about Ben. Yeah. In good shape tonight, Ma? Great shape. Two pounds under Davis. Think you're gonna lick him? I've licked everybody in the division. Are you nervous? Nervous? He's nervous. He took the boxing commission Turn two around. years. Took every sports writer good two time. years. Took me two years to pressure Davis into this fight. Yeah. <laughs> what brownie you think you're gonna stop him? Eat. I'll stop him in two if his legs hold up. Look, out. you lay off the propaganda. Can't you keep this loud mouth shut? I'm in charge of the muscles, yeah. not the brains. See. What are you using, champ? The good eye or the glass one? Here, now, wait a minute. Wait a Great publicity, Charlie, smacking Marlowe this afternoon. I meant to hit him. The kid was putting on an act to make it look good. And knocked that Marlowe on his ear in two rounds. What's wrong, Charlie? The books are all balanced. The bets are in. You bet your purse against yourself. You gotta be businesslike, Charlie, just because the kid talks a little fresh. Give me the tape, Quinn. Still thinking about Ben, Charlie? Everybody dies. Ben, Shorty, even you. What's the point? No point. That's life. You go in and just box that boy for 15 rounds, Charlie, like we agreed. Nobody get hurt, nobody get knocked out. You lose by a clean decision. You'll get your money and we're squared away. You know the way the betting is, Charlie. The numbers are in. Everything is addition or subtraction. The rest is conversation. I still think I can knock that Marlow on his ear in two rounds. Maybe you could, Charlie, but the smart money is against it. And you're smart. It's a deal. It's a deal. You gotta be businesslike, Charlie. The businessmen have to keep their agreements. Fifteen rounds is a long time, Mr. Roberts. Make it short, then. Get out of here. All gone down the drain. Everything down the drain. All these years, everything down the drain. All these years. AD as a big surprise for a very lucky young man. The boy who won his first amateur bout in one minute and 12 seconds, our own neighborhood champ, Charlie Davis. Yeah. Quiet, 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 quiet. Who's got the privilege of dancing a solo with Miss Iroquois Democratic Club, 14 AD. Shut 
Golly, she won't bite you. <laughs> you can dance, can't you? Can you walk? <laughs> Come on, she's willing like I am. Go ahead. <laughs> Okay, friends, before we get lost in fun, don't forget to vote for the people's choice. Jack Shelton, the man who never said no to a friend. Here are the law of gravity. Well, what's gravity? Sit up straight. <laughs> well, good night. Good night. I win. Oh, you're in better shape. Depends on the point of view. Well, good night. Ah, oh, it's early yet. Why don't you go to a movie? <laughs> Excuse me. Certainly. Is your friend going to wait for you? But as soon as your friend leaves, you leave. Promise? Promise. Say, so uh, what's your name? Peg. Still the undefeated champ. Amateur. Irma? Yeah? Don't you live alone? Uh-uh. Are you decent? Not particularly. Bring him in. Are you decent? This is Irma. Hello. She sculpts. Huh? I make statues. Oh. And this is Charlie Davis, amateur boxing champion of the universe, as of tonight. Really? Pleased to meet you. Well, sit down, champ. Thanks. Take your coat and shirt off. What? Like to pose for me? Oh. No, sit down. You got a longshoreman posing for me now. Longshoreman? Very graceful, too. Anytime you'd like to be preserved for posterity, champ. Go up and see me. Good night, champ. Peg? Fama? Is she kidding? What do you do here? Why paint? Paint? Pictures. I go to art school because I want to be a painter. Well, what about this Miss This and Miss That? Oh, there's an agency which arranges these little jobs for me. I get $25, and the crowd gets to whistle. Well, what's with that accent? What accent? Well, the way you say crowd and whistle. Well, I talk that way. Why? Well, because... Well, because I learned it that way. Where? Oh, in um, Paris, Berlin, London, Montreal. And you paint, too? Mm-hmm. Well, paint me. Sure.
But your friend leaves. Mm -hmm. Oh. <laughs> that character's still there. But pull the shade up. What? That'll send him away. Okay. Should I take my coat off? Hmm? Oh, makes no difference. How's this? Are you going to be a professional prize fighter? Or are you going to run for president? I just want to be a success. You mean you want other people to think you're a success? Sure, sure. Every man for himself. Oh. Time to go home now. Good night. Can I see you again sometime? What for? Well, uh, just to see you, anything. Try sometime. Will you? Get it, Peg. Why should you want to see me? Why do you want to see me? Because you're beautiful and you're level and you're different. Well, Charlie, you're sort of innocent. Do you know, when I went to school, I learned a poem. Went, tiger, tiger burning bright in the forest of the night. What immortal hand or eye could frame thy fearful symmetry? What symmetry? Well built. After I show him how to knock this guy out, we get this big feed, see? Yeah. Then they bring this quail out. Yeah. Oh, then what happened? Then what happened? Mm. Oh, come, come on. on. Come on. Finish the story. Well, she and Charlie begin to dance. Eh? Yeah. yeah. And before you know it, she's inviting him up to her apartment. Yeah. That's no, for me. Well, Charlie. Perfect man of the world gives me the sign. See, and me, yeah. I blow. Fellas, just like that. Charlie, very nonchalant. Hello, Charlie. Well, well. Uh, what happened? happened? She draws pictures. <laughs> you mean she was drawing your picture? Yeah. She's got a big room with big paintings and statues and all that kind of stuff. I'm going to see her again. She give you a diploma? Wise guy. Let me see that. Look, she drew his picture. Hey, look, fur. Doesn't look like you. All right, all right, all right. What are you getting sore about? I'm not oh, sore. Who's sore? Hiya, Mr. Quinn. He was at the fights. No kidding. Yeah, I saw him. You mean when I knocked that guy out? I was sitting right at the ringside. Gee, come on. What for? Come on, don't be a dope. Hit him while you're hot. OK. I went. You see that, Charlie? Like the fights tonight, Mr. Quinn? Sure, sir. How'd you like that quick knockout Charlie made? I've seen knockouts before. Everybody said it was sensational. You ever meet Charlie personally, Mr. Quinn? You sure. This is Charlie Davis. Come on. How about you taking a hand, you know, setting up a few money fights now? Charlie's on his way up. Mm-mm. -mm. Charlie's a great fighter, Mr. Quinn. He's got the natural stuff. He's got the style. A little training. So what? So what? He won the amateurs. So what? Kids win this and that every day. Thousands of them. 
One out of a hundred fights professionally, one out of a thousand is worth watching, one out of a million is worth coffee and donuts. Now tell your boy to get himself an honest job, huh? Nobody's asking you for coffee and donuts. You see that, Mr. Quinn? He's a natural fighter. You got a champion. Throw me the ball. Hiya, Pop. Good evening, Ma. Good evening, champion. We had a delegation tonight from the pool room. They congratulated your parents. Well, um, it's better to win than to lose. Surely. And the other boy, you heard him good, champion? Uh, it's only a prize fight, Ma. It's a sport. A fine sport. A fine Charlie, sport, indeed. Wait your run. Quinn will take you on. He'll teach you to be a professional fighter. All we gotta do is raise 10 or 15 bucks for equipment. We can dig up the dough and... Evening, Mrs. Davis. Evening, Mr. Davis. And I'll see you later, Charlie. Yeah. So now you'll be a professional sport and make a living hitting people. Knocking their teeth out, smashing their noses, breaking their heads in. Sportsman, this is what you want? All right, Anna, for closing up, let's close. Twenty years ago, I wanted to move to a nice place so our Charlie would grow up a nice boy and learn a profession. But instead, we live in a jungle so he can only be a wild animal. Do you think I picked the east side like Columbus picked America? It was possible to buy the candy store with a small cash down payment. Fine investment. Next door, a speakeasy. Across the street, a pool room. Loafers on the corner, children like wolves. Could I help it that J.P. Morgan refused to advance me credit? I would have opened a fancy store on Fifth Avenue. We could have lived at the Ritz. Charlie would be wearing a monocle. You think I want to spend the rest of my life selling kids two cents soda? Mr. Davis, give me a penny candy. Mr. Davis, give me a pack of cigarettes. Mind the baby. Make my raspberry. Well, not me, Ma. I understand? Not me. I don't want to end up like Pop. Don't talk that way about your father. Let the boy alone. He don't mean what he says. No, let him alone like you do. To fight in pool rooms, to hang around street corners. I want him to study, to be something. I want to be a fighter. So fight for something, not for money. Charlie. That's ten dollars for your boxing equipment. You don't have to discuss this with your mother. Thanks, Pop. It's cold out. Why don't you come in and get a little warm? Well, thanks. I'm waiting for somebody. Okay. Hello. 
outside, huh? Yeah. Shouldn't come yet, huh? No. Pass me. Maybe she won't come. She'll come, she'll come. That's what I'm afraid of. Well, it's gonna be great. She and my mother. Well, if you're going with a girl... Who's going with a girl? I won't have a dime in a hundred years. No unemployment for him. All right, all right, don't rub it in. I got troubles of my own. You and me both. Deal me in next time. Well, look through the one ads. Maybe somebody died, you can carry the corpse. Pass me. How's business, Mr. Quinn? Always bitching, huh, punk? <laughs> Why don't you talk to Charlie? What for? Well, he might listen to you. He ain't got a job, nothing. It ain't my headache. He don't want to fight that. This old lady won't let him. <sighs> that never stopped anybody, kid. You know that, Charlie. just doesn't have the drive, the fighting spirit. How about Marino? <sighs> he stinks, but he's willing. That's half the racket. Now, look, stop dreaming, kid. You'll have to make a buck some other way, huh? Let me see that form, will you, Sam? Yeah, that four-leaf clover's running again. Hey, Marino. You were great in your last fight. You know Marino, don't you, Charlie? He's a real mutt. Couldn't even lick my kid brother. <laughs> <laughs> I'll lay off of that stuff, Shorty. He even got knocked out last week, but he's still got plenty of dough in his pockets. The guy was a ringer. How much do you get when you lose? Fifty bucks. Fifty bucks? Fifty bucks? You hear that, Charlie? All right, Joe. You don't have to take his girl walking on the streets. Jacks. Queens. Let me see the cards. Oh, you don't trust me, huh? Charlie. Oh, 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 Charlie. See what I mean? And your boy don't get 15 bucks this time. You just burned up my cigar money, Charlie. I bet he'd be willing to pay expenses now, wouldn't you? Hey, you know, you're a pretty cute kid. I ought to take a sock at you. Charlie, Charlie. Mm. All right, Charlie. Right. Make a lot of dough, Charlie. Hey, that's Peg. Oh, get my hat, will you? Peg! Oh, Peg! She left her lipstick on you, Charlie. Huh? Did another girl show you her paintings? Oh, <laughs> uh, I ran into a door. Uh, let's take a walk around the block. What for? Well, um... um my mother's been talking like I was bringing you around for approval or something. Well, I don't want to embarrass you and make you sore and... Oh, I won't be sore. Look, Charlie, you can't call it off. Just tell her you like long engagements. Is this a proposal? From Mama. She'll say, uh, and where do you come from, Miss Bourne? And where do you come from, Miss Bourne? <laughs> she told you, Ma. I heard Miss Bourne, Charlie. Call me Peg, Mrs. Davis. My friends call me Peg. Thank you, Peg. I mean, where did you come from in this country? Highland Town. My father was a druggist there. A professional man. Very nice. Charlie's father's brother was a teacher. Very smart. Charlie's going to night school, he told you? Yes, I think it's an excellent idea. And you came to New York to study? I want to be a painter. Uh, oh, Charlie made me bring this. Talented, huh? Very talented. And you live in Greenwich Village? Yes. It must be very lonely for a girl all alone. You live alone. With a friend. She makes statues. Mm. Wonderful. Your father's a druggist, a professional man, and you're an artist. Um, um Peg, uh, have another cookie. They're homemade. Thank you. And Shorty? Yeah, yes. You know, <laughs> Shorty lives on the same block. He's got ten brothers and sisters. Yeah, and seven of them are out of work. <laughs> <laughs> Times are very hard. It's not easy for a boy to get started nowadays. But if his friends encourage him, if he if he goes to school and gets an education, if he makes sacrifices... Ah, uh, you end up wearing glasses and still broke. We're very poor, Mrs. Davis. We've, we've always been poor. My father scraped and scraped, and when Prohibition came, he, he sold some of the bonded medicinal whiskey, you know, without prescription. And what happened? Oh, they, they arrested and fined him, and I got fed up anyway, so I came to New York. We're nothing fancy. Did Charlie show you his medal? No. He won it at basketball. The very best in the whole school. Oh, Ma. Sure, sure, no. sure, sure. Now, don't be bashful, Charlie. Peg wants to see it. Mrs. Davis, may I come yeah. in? I heard your voices in the kitchen. 
I'm Miss Tedder. Oh, would you come in here, please? Yes, thank you. I'm terribly sorry to interrupt your dinner, but it's hurry, hurry, hurry. So many cases and so few people, and so little cooperation. I won't be long. I have your letter here. This is Anna Davis, is that right? Yes, I'm Anna Davis. And now, just a form to make a profit check. Race white, religion Jewish, nationality American. Is this your boy? Well, I'm Charlie Davis. Are you unemployed? Well, you got a job for me? Have you tried? He tried. All these questions must be answered. I'm sorry. Have you tried to get a job, Mrs. Davis? Would I be asking for a loan from charity if I could find work? It isn't personal. We're supposed to ask. Have you any resources, any jewelry? She has a wedding ring. We don't ask our clients to sell their wedding rings. I wish you'd understand. I have to ask these questions. Charlie, please, go in the other room. Is this furniture yours? Get out of here. Charlie, I won't have you talking like this. Get out of here. Get out of here! We have to ask questions if we're going to help. We don't want any help. Tell them we're dead. We don't want any help. I did it to buy myself fancy clothes. Fool! It's for you! To learn, to get an education, to make something of yourself! Shorty. Shorty, get me that fight from Quinn. I want money, do you understand? Money, money! I forbid, I forbid. Gotta buy a gun and shoot yourself. You need money to buy a gun. You think I like the idea of waiting around for the whole world to make up its mind what to do with me? My mother don't understand. What is it you want to do? There's only one thing I know how to do. Fight. Well, if you want to fight, fight. Then it's all right with you? Anything you want is all right with me. I love you, Charlie. Not for you, Peg. Not for you.
Sophia. Couldn't you wait for Grand Central? Got big news. Hey, Quinn. Hello, boy. Gee, that cigar stinks. Hey, wait a minute. Wait what do you a say, minute. Pal? You got that news? You got that fight? From me? <laughs> well, I don't know. Oh, come I don't on, know. tell me about it. Hey, 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 the hats here. What? How do you like the new coat, huh? And pipe the tie, Charlie. Oh, never mind that. Come on, give us the dope, will you? Well, we got some business arrangements to take care of. First, Charlie. Who's who? Roberts? Who else? Nobody fights the championship for anything unless Roberts gets cut in. You know that. He's the dough, the real estate, everything, the business. What does Roberts want, Quinn? Nothing much. Only Charlie. I'll be cutting you to pieces, Charlie. Ah, it only means more dough cut more ways. A bigger pie, more slices, more to eat for everybody. And Roberts will be telling us what and when. So what? Everybody's been telling us what and when. The guy owned the arena, the guy owned the fighter, the guy owned the books. Cheap mobsters, gangsters, guys who own nothing. We've been fighting for peanuts and eating them. Right? Right. You know you can't get a fight in New York without Roberts to say so, right? Right. Right, okay, Quinn, make the deal. I'll be champ, then I'll give the orders. I'll say what and when. You can tell us what and when, but you can't tell Roberts. But the champ can. Not if he gives away his right arm. Ah, you made me cut myself. It's my arm, isn't it? Words out of my mouth. How's a new job? Wonderful. I'm third assistant designer now. <clears throat> now, where the bags go? In there, sir. You miss me? <gasps> oh, it's been a long year, Charlie. Yeah. 21 fights. Nineteen knockouts, two decisions. A lonely year. I missed you, too. Mm. Hey, easy. What's the matter? <laughs> the guy had a head like a rock. Oh. <laughs> That'll be all right. And this? Chicago. And this? Philadelphia. And this? <laughs> Boston. <laughs> get something every time, but it's worth it. As long as you win. Look, lots of money, lots of clothes, lots of everything. Hey, Shorty, Shorty! What about the reservations, the tickets for tonight? Well, I want to talk to you How about, about a drink. Yes, sir. Well, it's early in the morning yet, Charlie. We haven't said hello. Hello, morning, noon, or night. What's the difference how you cut up the 24 hours? What do you know? The only trouble is Peg's pictures on the other side. Oh, we'll find another wall that stands still. Sure. <laughs> Look, it's even got a little sink. Bourbon, scotch, like milk, like cream. What do you have, folks? <laughs> Just like the candy store. You want a two-cent soda, Peg? Hey, Shorty, I thought I told you... Charlie, I, I'd like to... Come on, come on. We got no secrets here. I need some money. What do you mean you need money? I thought I gave you some in Detroit. That was Detroit. All the time he needs money. Well, what do you do with it? I steal it. I go through your pockets every night to see if there's any left to send to your old lady. Get the reservations. You, bring my bags in. What's wrong, Shorty? Nothing, nothing. Come on, Shorty. Not with me. He's restless. He's, he's had a lot of fights. He's all wound up like a guy on a jag. Peg, you've got a... What have I got to? You two still getting married? Well, I haven't had time to say no. Then get married right away. Why? Have I got a rival? Yeah. Money. You know what Charlie is? What they're making him? A money machine. Like gold mines, oil wells, 10% of the U.S. Mint. They're cutting him up a million ways. You're the only one left, Peg, the only one. He won't listen to me. 
If you don't hold on to him, it's goodbye, Charlie Davis. Marry him, Peg, but do it now, now. How do you like this coat? Handmade. Shorty's got one like this, too. Come on, honey, we're gonna burn up the town. We'll rob the stores. Mm. Well, wait a minute, wait a minute, I forgot. Uh, oh, yeah, Mom, Mom, is, Mom's coming up. Will you do me a favor, Shorty? The old lady's coming up. Keep her happy. Make with the jokes. Where'll you be? On the town. When? Arnold Hammond, then. What'd you decide, Arnold? Champ and I talked it over. We owe you about 40 grand. Exactly 40 grand. Yeah. We figure if we could hold the title for six months or more, we could pick up some easy money, you know, making appearances. The and... champ hasn't fought a real match in two years, Arnold. That costs money, no gates. We waited for a real contender. He's here. I know. It's a business, Arnold. We get one fight now, another in six months. That's money at the gate and the betting. Besides, I've been carrying you and your boy. Debts have to be paid or it wouldn't be business. I guess you're right, Mr. Roberts. Too bad about Ben getting hurt in that last fight. I like Ben. He was a real fighter. Uh, look. Accidents happen. None of them happen to other people. After Ben's head cracked into that post, I wanted to die. It's still there, the blood clot. Doctors say no more fights. What do you want me to do? I told you. Get your boy in the ring. It's up to you, Ben. If you say no, no. If it's no, I want the money right away. And I hold you responsible, Arnold. People don't count with you, do they, Mr. Roberts? You've been square with me, Arnold. I'll fight Davis. Okay, Mr. Roberts. In two months. In two months. But we agree it's for a decision. No slugging. I don't want my champ killed, Mr. Roberts. Nobody's gonna get killed. Thank you, Mr. Roberts. Thank you. Have a good cigar, Quinn. For a new champ. Thanks, Mr. Roberts. Too bad about Ben's head. He was a great fighter. Yeah, I like fighters, Quinn. Better than horses. But you gotta look out for business. So we don't tell Charlie anything about this. Let him go in fighting and knock Ben out. But Ben's sick, Mr. Roberts. Charlie might kill him. The crowd likes a killer, and Charlie's a hard fighter. It'll look fixed if he takes it easy. I know, Mr. Roberts. So wipe your nose and forget the whole thing. Where's your boy? I asked you to bring him down. He said you'd know where to find him. <laughs> Fresh kid, eh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll see him. Why don't you freshen your drink, Quinn? That tastes all right. Lay off in front of the old lady, would you? You're sleepy. Why don't you go home? I'm not sleepy. I'm just thinking. Don't tell me. It's getting kind of late, Mrs. Davis. Oh, I've waited. I'll wait, Shorty. I wouldn't want to disappoint Charlie. I'm waiting for Charlie, too. Quinn promised me. It's lucky to meet lucky people. You're a lucky woman, Mrs. Davis. You think so? In what way? Well, your son's going to be champ. And that means he's going to be rich. And that means you're going to be rich. I'm beautiful. Why should I want to be rich? Wonderful. Let me look, let me see. Well, I haven't changed, neither of you. How do you like everything, huh? It's wonderful. Well, I'm sorry we kept you waiting, but uh, Peg and I, we've been out of town. My fault, Mrs. Davis. My fault, everybody. We danced and danced, and Charlie just couldn't get me home. Look at my dress, we robbed the stores. <laughs> and what do you think of my wedding present? Yeah, we're gonna get married right away. We decided this afternoon. Oh, oh now I am rich. Getting married, that's great. Peg oh, makes sure. me feel fine. Okay, Shorty, that's enough. Wonderful. <laughs> oh, it's been such a night. Such a day. Did you ever drink an ocean full of champagne? Every place we went, there were millions of people. And everyone, an intimate personal friend of Charlie's. <laughs> and every place we went, there was another party and more champagne. And Charlie was the king. And I was 
Charlie's girl. <laughs> and you're Charlie's mother. And you're Charlie's manager. And you're Charlie's friend. And who are you? I'm nobody. Oh, now don't talk. We're all nobody. You know who nobody is? Nobody is anybody who belongs to somebody. So if you belong to nobody, you're somebody. Understand? Hey! <laughs> I'm sorry. This is Alice, Charlie. She's a friend of mine. She sings the night club. Glad to meet you, Charlie. Hello. And Miss Boone? Hello. Could I try it on? It's all yours. Well, when's the wedding? Well, right away. Good, good. We'll invite the whole neighborhood. You want to have it uptown or downtown? Uptown. Downtown. <laughs> Any place, as long as it's legal. Gee, soft like baby skin. Better cost a lot of dough. Too rich for your blood. Probably Roberts. Hello, Mr. Roberts. We've been waiting for you. Who asked you to wait? Oh, I'm Roberts. You're Charlie Davis. Yeah. Come on, Alice. Let's go. <laughs> Pleased to meet you, Mr. Roberts. Good to see you. Uh, this is my mother. How do you do, Mr. And uh, this is my girl. We're going to get married. I just bought her a mink coat for a wedding present. Mm. And uh, who's this? Huh? Oh, that's my friend, Shorty. Uh, how about a drink, Mr. Roberts? Never touch it. <laughs> Uh, how do you like the layout, huh? Very nice. Huh? You know, we got a wonderful view. You can see the whole park from here. What's on your mind, Roberts? Oh, social call. Social call, huh? What kind of a deal did you cook up with Quinn? Lay off, shorty. Who did you say this was? That's my friend. For how much? Ten percent. Good evening, friend. Good evening, partner. Watch your arm, Charlie. I told you it was my arm, didn't I? Well, can we talk? Yeah. Who's this? He's with me. Well, she's with me. Well, we have to get straightened out on this deal, Charlie. I thought you arranged that with Quinn. I don't talk money with Quinn's. What do you want? I only make one kind of deal, Charlie. From now until the time you retire, 50%. 50% of what? Quinn gets 30%, Shorty gets 10%, and I get 60. You want to crack at the title, don't you, Charlie? We start fresh. You're a fresh young kid, so we start fresh. There's always 100%. You take 50, and I take 50. Well, what about uh, Quinn? Hmm, he's your manager. We both need him. You give him 5%, and I'll give him 5%. Well, what about Shorty? I don't ask you what you give your mother, Charlie, or your girl. You want Shorty for laughs? Give him the 10%. I pay my expenses, you pay yours. Well, Shorty gets 10%. I told you, I only make one kind of deal, Charlie. This way, you fight for the championship right away. <laughs> okay. I'll take care of Shorty myself. But, uh, don't say anything about it, huh? He's your friend. You're my partner. It's a deal. Well, what about me, Mr. Roberts? What percent do I get? After all, I made him what he is, because I told him to fight. In my business, there's only 100%. I'd like to say goodnight to your mother, Charlie. Huh? Oh, yeah, sure. Uh, Ma? Ma? Mr. Roberts would like to say goodnight. I was awful glad to meet you, Mrs. Davis. You're a lucky woman to have a boy like Charlie. He's gonna make a lot of money. Enough for everybody. No more candy store for you, huh? It's a lot nicer, ain't it? Yeah, you almost forgot. Well, what's this? Just a little on account, Charlie. I know you must be running short. Good night, Mrs. Davis. By the way, Charlie, you want to start training right away. Fight goes on in two months, you know. Oh, it can't be too soon for me. Oh, I'll take a tip, kid. What's that? Postpone the wedding bells. Keep your mind on the fight. Good night, Charlie's girl. Very nice coat. Remember, after mink comes sable. See you, Charlie. Good night. Shorty, we got a lot of work to do. I want you to set up that training camp, get a hold of Quinn, tell him to get me the best sparring partners in town. When do you want to start? Well, you heard him right away. Then you're not going to get married? Well, sure we're going to get married, but it'll wait. Why can't the fight wait? Ma, you can't do a thing like that. Explain it, though, will you, Shorty? Charlie's absolutely right, Mrs. Davis. You can't postpone a fight. We could wait. Why can't we drive up to Greenwich tonight? You can get married right away. No, Shorty. We'll wait. That's my baby. And you know what else, Ma? I think you ought to get rid of the candy store and come and live here in a decent place. I live in a decent place, Charlie. Yeah, and it's paid for. Sure. By who? 
Not by Roberts. What's the difference? What are you beefing about? It's money, ain't it? You get it, Peg, don't you? Yeah, I get it. Charlie. You ought to keep walking around. I don't want him to cool off. I've been thinking, Charlie, you've been working too hard. Why don't you take a few days off and go to the city and see Peg, huh? Ah, I feel fine. The last few weeks get kind of tough, don't they, Charlie? Yeah. to lose. What have you got to win? to me. Don't forget, you maybe come up here. Yeah, I'd like to see you get ahead, Ellis. What'd you ever do about it? Nothing. I never done anything about it. You done everything about it. Job in the nightclub. That lousy job. And the clothes you're wearing. You want them back? I'll give them your back in spades. <laughs> <laughs> take it easy, will you? You can't take that, can you? No, I guess I can't. For me to you, a word of advice. People shouldn't be too ambitious at first. You drive too fast, you break your neck. Kill him, Charlie. Kill him. Kill him, Charlie! Kill him! Get him down to the hospital. Take some x rays. I'll call an ambulance. He's not going to live. Well, we'll see. You must have hit him awful hard. Anything I can do, anything, any money, I just. He'll be all right. He won't be all right. You know that. Take it easy, Arnold. Go ahead, Charlie. Everybody be waiting. I'll clean up here. Go ahead, Quinn. Shorty, keep the champagne cold. Come on, Charlie. Mr. Arnold. Anything I can do, just say the word, anything. Come on, Shorty. I'll stick around and drive down to the hospital with him. That's a good idea. I'll see you later. Okay. Run along, Shorty. I'll take care of everything here. You promised to have Davis take it easy. Look at him. Maybe he'll die. You better beat it, Shorty. What for? 
Who promised to take care of what? Have it your way. You got any complaints? Me? I got no complaints. He got complaints. Maybe he'll die. Everybody dies. You knew Ben had the blood clot in the brain. You promised. What do you him. want? A few grand more? You got it. Anything on your mind, Shorty? Plenty. Spill it. I don't like being your partner, Roberts. I'm out. And I think after tonight, Charlie will be out, too. Mm. You're a little behind the time, Shorty. We're not partners. You were out already. Whatever you get, you get from Charlie. He's giving you a hand out. Didn't he tell you? No. Check it. Send me the hospital bill. Congratulations, Tab. It was a wonderful fight. Hey, Charlie, show me the glove. Was it a tough go, Charlie? He wouldn't go down. It was like a rock. Who's sitting here? You or him? That's right. That's right. You saw him, Peggy. You saw him. Yes, I saw him, Charlie. I saw him. There's Shorty, Charlie. Shorty! Hey, Shorty! Kings of the world, Shorty. Aren't you going to join us, Shorty? No. Why not? What's the matter? You didn't win the title, Charlie. Ben was double-crossed. They promised him an easy go. Where do you get that stuff? Who promised who? Ben was sick. He had a blood clot, and they all knew. A blood clot? You didn't know that, Charlie, did you? No. I didn't. It's the old alibi, champ. You'll get used to it. Come on, let's sit down, everybody, and celebrate. What's the matter, Shorty? Don't you think I beat him square? You beat him foul. Ask Quinn, ask Roberts. I don't like partners like Roberts, Charlie. It's rotten enough without him. Tell him he's out. What are you talking about, Shorty? Are you crazy? You want to make trouble? You can't believe everything you hear? Can I believe Roberts? He told me to check with you. He said I was out. Am I out? Or are you going to keep on giving me the 10% for old time's sake? Yes. I had to tell him, Champ. There's only room for one in the driver's seat, and that's you. Oh, sure. What's the difference? We won, didn't we? That's what we wanted. We didn't win. He won. Uh, come on, let's sit down. We'll talk about it some other time. We're going to talk about it right now. That's right. Now's the time. Now. It's not enough to be great, Charlie. I try to tell you in Philly. I try to tell you in L.A. We're infested with rats. He's not just a kid who can fight. He's money. And people want money so bad they make it stink. They make you stink. If you don't like the racket, Shorty, you can always quit. I quit before I ever came in here. And if he has any sense left, he'll do the same. I'm through, and you can keep your pension. Come on, Shorty, let's all relax. Come on. I can't do it all by myself. Now, remember, long ago, he came to us and asked us, and we said, it's all right, Charlie, go ahead. Now, we've got to help him. Nobody can help him. He's got to help himself. Charlie!
matter? You lose your key? No. I'd like to have a cigarette, if you don't mind. If one could only say, Charlie, that it started here or, or there, but we're in something horrible and we've got to get out. Well, what can I do? Go back to the candy store? It was an accident. Only the dying, nothing else. It was all inevitable. You must quit. It took a long time, Peg. Rotten and hard and tough. Now I'm a champ. Now it's gonna be easy. I can't stop now. I can't throw it all away. It's what we wanted. But, Charlie, we can't live with these people. I couldn't bear it. Well, you, you won't have to see them or meet them again. We'll live fine. I'll make the money. I'll look after Ben. Believe me, I'll do everything I can. But I can't start again. From what? With what? But Charlie, you'll have to start again with nothing anyway, someday. Only it'll be worse. You'll be like Ben. I'm too smart for that. It's nothing to argue, Charlie. I can't live this way. You stop now. Or I stop. That's not fair. Was it fair for Short to die? It was an accident. And for Ben to fight with a blood clot? I didn't know. Charlie, one way or the other. But I'm the champ. You mean Roberts is? Charlie, I can't marry you. Let it just mean marrying him. Come on, take the money. Take it. Then, then, how about working with me? It's not charity. I need someone. Someone I can trust. Okay, Charlie. Okay. <laughs> This time, Charlie. Well, what's the matter? You know I'm good for the money. Only if you fight. So I'll fight. And it's got to be Marlow. Leave the door open, you dope. Crazy coming in here in front of everybody. It's a gym. People come and go here. Besides, I'm an admirer of yours. I like to watch your train. So you're all 
all set for the Marlowe match. Yeah, we're all set. That's great. The odds are two to one for you to win. It's a lot of dough if you bet on Marlowe. I ain't handling no title over to any kid. I can beat him. Betting on yourself to win, Charlie? I didn't think you were punch drunk yet. Well, I think I can beat him. You're not thinking, Charlie. You're dreaming. It's only natural after all these years of living good. Fight now and then, the dough rolling in and the dough rolling out. You begin to dream this can go on forever. When I lose the championship, they'll have to carry me out. This gym is full of guys who were carried out. Mr. Roberts is right, Charlie. You'd like to see me take a dive, wouldn't you? No, why should I? There's been money in the bank to me, but facts are facts, Charlie. Yeah? How much of my money you got in the bank, Quinn? How much you got, Charlie? There's 60 grand in there. You want to count it? 60 grand, a clean, fast fight. 15 rounds to a decision. 60 grand at two to one. You're under the purse at two to one. I'm good at figures, Charlie. It'll add up to a fortune. Besides, you don't like fighting anymore. You like living too much. So why not live the easy life? Maybe open a cafe with this singer, this what's her name? Alice. Yeah, Alice. You punch the cash register instead of getting punched. You got a million friends, Charlie. You can't miss. All right, Charlie. Let's stop being nice to each other. We agreed to make a killing on this fight months ago. You're into me for a lot of dough. I made my arrangements with Marlo and a lot of other people. Nobody backs out now. That's the way it is. Besides, uh, a lot of guys think Marlo can beat you on the square. I don't take no dive for nobody. What do you think I am, a tanker? Who's asking you to take a dive? Fifteen rounds to a decision. Fifteen round decision? That's right. When you get ready to bet that dough, Charlie, see that you give it to me to bet for you. I'll get you a few extra points. How's the head, man? Still on, Mr. Roberts. No thanks to you. You still sore? I should have done something for you, Ben. I like being Charlie's trainer. Here's a little something to sweeten the past. I don't take blood money, Mr. Roberts. Mine or anybody else's. You only have to bend down to pick it up, Ben. Take it easy, Ben. You mustn't get excited. Just a prick here, Charlie. The last couple of weeks, I've been fighting my head all the time. You gotta get your real examination, Ben. You have to fight it. Are you all right now? Yeah, yeah, I'm all right. Yeah, take the money, Ben. It's not like people. Got no memory. It don't think. Did you sell the fight, Charlie? Are you crazy? I'll see you up in camp. Take it easy. Open, Quinn. What will people think? Do you care? You sure you're not worried? I got nothing to be worried about. But as long as you keep your mind on the dough, to the money. Are you gonna bet? If I have to beg, borrow, and steal, I'm gonna bet this fight. Just remember, baby, I told you about it. You get in on a big fix once in a lifetime. After it's over? No problem. The boy's gonna make a snoop full of dough. You'll go through it in a year with your help. That gives me a year, Quinn. What about you? I'll find myself another mug. They come and they go, but I stay. That's the reason you should listen to me, baby. Don't you ever get tired. No. 
I got no time for pride. He could have had the whole world, so he leaned over sideways and grabbed you. Nobody grabbed me, I grabbed him. Sure, baby, sure, all love in the yard wide. But every time he's low down, he's gone to pig. He's not gonna feel so high after this fight. I don't care where his heart is, only the money. What about me, how I feel? Don't romance me, Quinn, you're getting old. You could use a new paint job yourself. And I know where to get it. delivery today. But Charlie, come in. Better make some coffee. You look as if you need some. Isn't this a trifle early for you? Oh, I got up early this morning. That is, I didn't get to sleep. Oh, celebrating the Marlowe match. I uh, tried to. I thought you skipped all the places in the papers that mentioned my name. On the contrary, I read about you religiously. Orange juice? Sure. Yes, I've been promoted since you were last here. I'm fully fledged designer now. That's great. Well, good health. What is it this time, Charlie? Last time you came, it was because you were bored. And the year before, you were lonely. Once it was your birthday, twice it was mine. What's the occasion now? I don't understand. I worked very late last night, so I'm not very bright this morning, but I'll try now. What do you want? Advice? Comfort? Recriminations. I brought this, too. Doesn't look like me. It's bad technique. Is this your problem? Don't you want it anymore? 
No. I just don't understand. Now, I'm still half asleep. If you don't want it anymore, why return it after all these years? I want you. Here I am, Charlie. Hey, I'm, I'm scared. So low down, I, I had to see, I wondered, I had to find out. Once and for all, I had to know. And we won't be broke. It's my last fight. Look, I got 60 grand and more to come, and I'll buy... Don't you. tell me what you can get me. Don't tell me what you can buy. You've got nothing to buy. I, I said all that once before, didn't I? Don't talk, Charlie. Just sit, because you'll only start saying those things you've learned to say, not what you once were, what you are. Ah, ever since Irma left, it runs over. Irma? Well, where is she? In Texas. Texas? Doing what? She's married. She married the first guy that ever bought a statue from her. <laughs> is she happy? Oh, deliriously. It all happened on a, on a rainy afternoon. Yeah, things happen that way. Sometimes you, you wait very long for happiness, and sometimes you fall over it just before you learn to walk. She just walked it all, all jumpy, jumping. Well, I must be jumping, so I can't think why. I think I'm ill. I'm running a height. What am I talking about? Do you know? Do you know what it's like to love and be alone? Gently. Is it spoiled? No, no. I'm trying to be useful. And get me a saucer. Yeah. Let the expert have a taste. One pretty woman in the family is enough. You know, that's a taste that never leaves your mouth. The expert approves. <laughs> say, I meant to ask you, uh, what did the old lady say when you told her this was my last fight? She cried. And then she said the most beautiful thing I've ever heard in my life. What? Well, she said she didn't think that at her age she could still fall in love again. With who? Us. Oh, uh, by the way, what'd you do with all my money? I put it in my bank. Well, in the morning, I'll go down with you and pick it up. What for? Oh, I need it. Why? Well, to bet on the fight. Charlie, if you lose the fight and the money, then you'll want to fight again. No, 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 I'm not going to give you the money to bet. We're rich enough. Charlie. Charlie, your sights were so right. Hello, Shimon. Good to see you. You look wonderful. Oh, <laughs> he looks fine. You know Miss Bourne, Charlie's fiance? Yeah, this is a spectrum. Here you are, Mr. David. Charlie, something special for you. Straight from the Garden of Eden. Thanks. Have some wine, Shimon. What's the occasion? It's Charlie's last fight. You don't say. Well, don't spread it around, Shimon. I'm like a grave. Does that mean you won't fight anymore? That's right. 
Well, so you'll retire champion. That's bad. It's good. <laughs> to the future retired champion of the world, good luck. And to my five dollars that I bet on the fight, good luck too. <laughs> good. Excuse me. Charlie, everybody is betting on you. The whole neighborhood, like you was the Irish sweepstake. People shouldn't bet. No, no, Mrs. Davis. It isn't the money. It's a way of showing. We are proud, period. I'm glad I met you. Hey, Charlie, hey, when you leave, stop in and say to do do. What's the matter with people, anyway? Why do they have to bet? It's a racket. Don't they know they know it's a racket? People gamble. They're on the suckers. Tell them not to bet on me. I'm too old to walk up and down New York telling people not to bet, especially when they win. Well, you don't win all the time. You can lose, too. Suckers like Shimon shouldn't bet. Suckers like Shimon. No, you didn't hear what he said, Charlie. It isn't the five dollars. I heard, I heard. I can still lose. That's right, Charlie. Then why bet? Why take a chance? Well, you don't understand. It's a different thing. I don't want to quit without money. I don't want to end up broke. Bro, you've got $60,000. You could stop right now. Stop now? Are you kidding? There's a million bucks riding on my back. If I don't fight, I don't get a dime. I'm all mobbed up, tied hand and foot down to my last buck. You think I want to end up like Ben, punchy, with a blood clot on the brain, waiting to die any day, or with a bullet in my back in an alley? What do you mean, bullet? Don't you understand? The fight's fixed. Fixed? What does it mean, fixed? It... It means I'm... I'm throwing the fight. Throwing the fight? It means I'm, 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 I'm gonna lose. It's all arranged. It's a racket anyway. That's why I want to bet the 60 grand. You get it, Peg, don't you? Yeah, I get it. It's an investment, a sure thing. Well, what do you want? What are you looking at? Then you didn't understand what Shimon said. It's none of my business what they think or what they do. Nobody looks out for me. Poor Charlie, nobody's looking out for you. You're all so high and mighty. You wouldn't even have that dirty candy store if it wasn't for me. You wouldn't have a dime to close on your back. It's my money, isn't it? You were in such a big hurry to take it and slap it in the bank. Sure, you said, we're rich enough like the rest of them. What comes out of my hide? I take the beatings and you take the dough like all the rest of them. Well, this time I'm taking care of the dough. Give me back that 60 grand. Yeah, that's right. I'm like the rest of them. So you want your money back, or take it back, and everything else you've given me. Here, what everybody gives you. The long years of happiness, the promises broken, the lonely nights. <laughs> Stopping him. It's gonna be a mile of massacre. He's looking great, champ. Thanks, Pete. Feel fine. I can even name the round. Good. Last night, eh, Charlie? Yeah. You know, I always get a sort of sad feeling when I see him breaking camp. Tearing down the ring, collecting the gear. It always felt so good after a win. Walk down Lennox Avenue. Kids all crazy for you and proud. Champion of the world for the whole world to know. 
You fixed a fight, didn't you? I've been worried about you, Ben. The three or four times the last month you fainted. But I got it all arranged. It's not like a hospital. They got doctors and they uh, give you tests. It's kind of like a checkup. You know, your head's been getting worse. A fella's got to take care of himself. Yeah. It's been pretty bad lately. That's why I shouldn't have fought you. But look, Charlie. You can lick Marlowe. He's fast, but he ain't got what it takes. If you keep on top of him, he'll go down, I know. I got you covered, Ben. You haven't got a thing to worry about. The bet's in there for you, too. That's what I figured. I knew it that day at the gymnasium. All this monkey business with the train to run the odds up against Marlowe, and you're not really training at all. What are you ducking out on, Charlie? You can be on top for years yet. That's the way things are, Ben. That's the way they are. It'll be a big chunk of dough, and I'm through. It's enough. Why? There's nobody in your class. Look, I've watched this Marlowe study them. He backs away and shoots the left and backs away. You keep on top of him, he'll go down. I know he'll go down. Look, I'll show you. Look, Charlie, you keep on top of him like this, see? And then one good punch. I know, I know. Maybe this Roberts talked to you a little too fast. I'd like a word with you, Ben. Say it, Mr. Roberts. When are you leaving? Tomorrow, when Charlie leaves. I think you better go tonight. Where to, Mr. Roberts? Where we don't have to see you. Now, take it easy. I'm taking it easy. We'll get somebody else for your corner, Charlie. Let Charlie take care of that. It's taken care of. Get out tonight and keep your mouth shut. Now, wait a minute, Roberts. Maybe Ben's right. What's our hurry? Maybe we figured this model wrong. Maybe we could cover. Don't second guess me, Charlie. It's all set. You bet you pile on yourself to lose. So what are we talking about? I told Quint to dump you months ago. He said Charlie wanted you. Well, Charlie doesn't want you anymore. Let Charlie tell me! I'm telling you. Start running. You double-crossed me before. Now I'm through, done, washed up. I don't scare easy anymore. Punchy, Ben, your head's soft. Leave him alone, he's sick. I let you stay on Charlie's pension list. You don't tell me how to live. No, but I'll tell you how to die. You get this crazy punch from break out of here. Come on, I don't scare anymore. I don't scare anymore. Ben. Ben. Ben, get up, will you? Come on, Ben. Ben. Ben, come on, get up. Ben. Oh, ben, Charlie. you'll be all right. Come on, get up. It's the same old... Atta boy. Like I told you. Get a doctor, will you? No, 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 I don't want to. No take no it doctor. easy, Ben. I don't want Charlie, to. Charlie, no, take it easy. I can take it out of here. Get out of here. Get out of here. Let him wear himself out. Always so loud. I can take it. I can take it. I can take it. I can take it. I gotta take it. I'm the champ. <laughs> I think he's dead. Champ? Yeah. No. It's time to get ready. You only got a few minutes. Did you have a good sleep? Yeah. I hear Marlowe was so nervous he could hardly sit still. He ain't taking it easy, <laughs> lying back so relaxed. Yeah, and he's got plenty to be nervous about, too. Because they're certainly going to carry him out of that ring. You should feel kind of funny not having Ben with you. He was a great champ. 
Leaving event. Get ready. Why, uh, I was talking to a few of the reporters out in the hall. They asked me how you felt. I says, what do you think a champ feels? He's sleeping inside. Yeah, dreaming. Make this a fight. Gentlemen, the champion looks badly out of position. Boys, I won you for the last time. Fight. What round is it? It's the end of the twelfth. Fall down at 15.
I'll kill a rat. Take a dive. So long, my friend. So we got a new champion. Oh, yeah. Don't worry about it. He just lost his head. That's all. Thank you. 
Congratulations, champ. Get yourself a new boy. I retire. What makes you think you can get away with this? What are you gonna do? Kill me? Everybody dies. Are you all right? I never felt better in my life.